Okay, so um, I assume you guys can hear me now. Yeah, this is the first video. I'm using OBS. Well, I was using like Windows 10 software. Let's see if I can pull up like the little bar. Can I? Um, yes, this is a game. Shh. Yeah, on this thing, you, you might not be able to see it. It's the black thing, sort of center screen. Anyway, so we're going to return with, oh, you just saw it, we're gonna do another video on Steven Crowder failing to do a rebuttal to Adam Ruins Everything, and I don't hate Steven, I'm even subbed to him. It's just when he mentions Adam Ruins Everything, what the heck? What the heck was that, dude? No, recording's still going. Did you guys hear that? It's like a done, like, you know, like, when you turn a tablet on, like, it's a done, maybe it was just me. Anyway, let's watch. I'm Adam Cobb. What's up with this? What's the point of this coming up segment anyway? It's like coming up on Louder with Crowder. Adam Conover finds out he has. Uh, I don't know. Um, herpes. However, Adam ruins that actually meaning anything because he already ruined herpes being bad. Like he, you get the joke. On over, and I'm running for president of Florida, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. I'm just gonna mute this and talk about how beautiful this black and white filter is, and how little of a point this serves. Like seriously, what's the point of this? No, anything? No, no point. Okay, can we? Okay, good. Adam ruins everything. Electoral college. This is something after Donald Trump swept the electoral college. Not a historic victory, not a landslide, but a good victory. And he's lost the popular vote by a couple million votes. A lot of people saying, ah, this is unprecedented. It's not. A lot of people saying, this is unfair. It's not. We need to do away with the electoral college. We don't. Great argument, Stephen. Uh, and of course, Adam ruins everything at college. Humor. Emphasis on the college. No emphasis on the humor. Oh! Wreck! You wrecked him, Stephen Crowder. I'm sure Adam Conover's just sitting there going, Man, you know, Stephen Crowder, he wrecked me so hard. Mm -hmm. They've talked about the Electoral College, and they've tried to do this whole rebuttal on the Electoral College, talking about why it's no longer relevant. So we are going to get into this piece by piece. Uh, Adam ruins everything. Hello? Namely correct information. Let's roll okay, the first Every four years, we hear the words electoral college over and over again, but we never talk about what a ridiculous and frankly undemocratic system it really is. Oh, okay, undemocratic. This is, this is the crux of the argument against the electoral college, right? It's undemocratic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is the, this is the cotex of the argument against North Korea system. It's undemocratic. Yes. <laughs> People, like, like they fooled. No, that's by design. Let's start with this. Okay, the Marley. Marley was dead to begin with. The United States has never been a democracy. North Korea had never been a democracy. And that's important. Because if you understand it, you look through that prism, you'll understand why the Electoral College is necessary. And if you understand it, if you look through that prism, you'll understand why a dictator is necessary. I'm getting it, Crowder. I'm getting it. Um, the man who once said liberty is not a passing concept and he's been rejected for generations that you, by the way, Stephen, you were wrong. I understand now you even said so. These are just a, a bunch of quotes that you have from some of the founding fathers or signers talking about how pure democracy is evil. I'm sure I could probably find a bunch of quotes from Joseph Stalin talking about why democracy is evil, but okay, I understand. It's one of the greatest evils, Benjamin Rush wrote, because pure... Yeah, um... Didn't the Founding Fathers also know they weren't uh, completely perfect? That's why they made the Constitution a living document. It's called, a, they're called amendments for a reason. Pure democracy is mob rule. Pure democracy is the, the, the mob of the majority can infringe on the rights of the minority. Now, I know that leftists love to act as though they're there to help minorities, but uh, not when it comes to the Electoral College, not when it comes to someone over in, in, in flyover state. So that is the reason for the Electoral College. We are a constitutional representative republic. We are not a democracy. So if you understand that, well, then the rest of this is irrelevant. But most people don't understand that, and so there needs to be more convincing you. Let's go to the next clip. The Electoral College gives vastly more power to different voters depending on which state they live in. Bigger states. Nope. Smaller states. If your state has less people, you have more power. Yeah. Let's let's keep going. Let's go to Oh, oh! 
beautiful rebuttal, Crowder. I'm sure, you know, Adam is looking at that like, you know, he's right. Because he said I was right. And I am right. I do. I am Adam. I ruin everything. That's how I roll. Yo, I'm rolling. Then Adam, like, gets on his motorcycle. He's like, I'm rolling. Rock and rolling. And he's playing like, Mississippi Queen. You know what I mean. Mississippi Queen. You know what I mean. Not too many people live in Wyoming, but they have three electoral votes, or one for every 135,000 voters. California is packed with people, but they have 55 electoral votes, or one for every 411,000 voters. Okay, so they try and show percentage-wise that there are, there's more representation with Wyoming. But even if you look at it, three votes to 55 with California, it's pretty minute. Let's bring up another clip from everyone's favorite Founding Father Hamilton. Let's bring up the Hamilton quote from Federalist Paper 68. The big reason for this is because you can't just have people pandering to a few big cities. Uh, let's stop by New York, D.C., Los Angeles, San Francisco, Detroit in the 50s, promise them a bunch of stuff, wrap this up and go home. You might have a point if the Electoral College was just one state is one vote over wins. You know, most states win. However, Crowder, that's not how it works. Each state has a different amount of electoral votes. So all you're really doing is changing the amount of states. Or changing the states, really. You know? You're basically keeping the exact same thing. It's just on a different level, and you're defending it because... I don't know. So the whole reason to try and balance that power is because I know these crappy states that you think of as flyover states will continue. He never said that. You know, we'll get to that. Like Wyoming, they can't have their vote drowned out by people who are corralled in the big cities. I've talked about this a lot. This is why leftists want you in big cities. They want you on public transport. They want you to be uh, dependent on. Wait, is that a leftist thing that, you know, people want you in big cities? I've never heard a leftist say that, really government services. They want you to think it's a sense of community robbing from your brother through taxes and bigger government. That's why they want you in big it cities. sounds so nice. It sounds so nice. But God, why, Wyoming Crazy. shouldn't matter as much. Let's get to the next clip. Who cares if the Electoral College is kooky? I'm kooky. I have two turtles. Okay, well, it gets worse because the Electoral College also creates swing states. Oh, I love the swing states. They make election nights so exciting, kind of like when my turtles move a little. Well, exciting? I think the fact that the entire election is determined by just a handful of states is really messed up. For one thing, it means presidential candidates can ignore almost the entire country. Do you see the contradiction here? No! Do. You just tried to ignore the entire country! <laughs> when? All he said was the Electoral College creates an uneven power balance towards smaller states. You know? And even if it's by design, again, North Korea is a communist dictatorship by design. I'd like to see you defend any change in North Korea by saying, no, it's, it's by design, guys. I don't think I'll see you doing that, Crowder. Fly over that. Fly We're over states. Fly over here. Wyoming. Why are, they, why are they represented? No, now all of a sudden they care about the little guy, right? Because swing states allow them to ignore the voiceless in Wyoming, who, by the way, shouldn't really have that many electoral votes to balance the powers that be. Next clip, Jared. Hello, America. I'm Adam Conover, and I'm running for president of Florida, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. And boy, do I love Florida oranges, Philadelphia cheesesteaks, and whatever you people like in Ohio. The rest of the country can go suck a big one. Hi, America. I'm running for president for Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Virginia. Swing states change, you dumbass. He never said they did. Swing states change. That's the whole point. Swing states don't say the same. Okay, did he ever say swing states are always the same? Like, did I miss that? As party flat platforms change, as the principles change, you see that with Donald Trump, he's shaken up the whole map. Let's roll this final clip because I think it's relevant and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Thank you for the information. I cannot believe our beautiful system has become so messed up. Oh no, the Founding Fathers designed our system this messed up. <laughs> He is right. The Founding Fathers did design it this way. And you have a lot of stupid people. They don't understand that we're not a democracy, that we're a constitutional republic. The found I mean, you don't understand us up in here in North Korea. I already used that joke. I'm sorry. Founding Fathers, they spent more ink on this than any other branch of government. 
This was unbelievably important to them. The old quote on democracy is it's basically two wolves on deciding which lamb to eat for dinner. I'm butchering that, but that's the quote on democracy. Listen, swing states matter now. They campaign there strategically because these are actually generally areas of middle America, places that would be underrepresented if not for the Electoral College. Really, what would you do? New York, D.C., Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, Detroit, back in the 50s where you promised... Okay, we're going to go over both of Crowder's arguments here. The first argument is states would be underrepresented. What about governors? What about the Senate? You know, what about what about those two? What about the House, for that matter? Um, your other argument is, you know, uh, what is that these states would have so much more voting power. I'll make you a deal, Crowder. If you can find me one state with 51% or more of the population, I'll give up. But, but even then, Crowder, let's assume you mean, no, um, these few states would have so many votes. Um, okay, you want to know what state borders are, Crowder? Lines on a map. And they don't matter in the grand scheme of things. They're, you know, not these big important things. They were just drawn on a map somewhere. Okay. It's a bunch of union handouts, Chicago, where you cater to the union thugs. And then, all of a sudden, next thing you know, people in South Dakotas are paying for some guy in Los Angeles to take a dump in a tranny-designated bathroom. We're a nation. That's the point. That's what we don't want to happen. We don't... I mean, we shouldn't have a nation. We should just have our... Arbitrary borderlines mean everything. We want to burden the rest of the country with values that not only do they not share, but are unconstitutional. Right? That we're so far away from federalism, and this is why we have term limits. This is why representatives are selected, or you know, depending what you're talking about, legislatures. Right? It's it's a representative republic. We should have terms. We should be changing these politicians regularly, but their job is to represent people and make decisions, not simply to go, all right, put everything to a popular vote. That's the Bernie Sanders. Well, democratic socialism doesn't change what it is. Democratic slavery isn't any- The Bernie Sanders sounds like a dance. Better. Democratic, I don't know, cheating at POG. The point is, just because people vote for something, it doesn't make it okay. They don't- You see, we need dictators. We need strong dictators, like- I already used the Kim Jong Un joke, and Fidel Castro's dead. So, uh, Vladimir Putin, maybe. Understand that the United States is not a democracy. They don't understand why this matters. They don't understand why the balance of power matters, and they don't understand why we don't want to be simply like Europe. They don't. Again, if you want balance of power, that's what the Senate is for. That's what the House are for. I don't understand the principles behind federalism, behind enumerated powers, why states should have their own autonomy, and why representatives should be, choosed by, uh, should be chosen by a legislature, and why they should be representing not only the people, but first and foremost, the Constitution. And this is one thing, too, from the left. We've talked about this a lot. They all, they're always caring about diversity, diversity. Well, they don't really care about this kind of diversity, right? The Electoral College Thanks. is a great representative. It's emblematic of intellectual diversity, right? It's, em it's emblematic of making sure that people can have diverse states, microcosms, petri dishes, so you can have crappy ones that have salmonella in their petri dish, like California, or you can have a vibrant, successful one, like a strong kefir culture there in Texas, because of intellectual diversity. I don't care about the cultural diversity in the same way that leftists do. I don't care about the racial diversity at all. I certainly don't care about the gender diversity because of the LGBTQ, AAIP. We don't know what that means. I want intellectual diversity with constitutional conformity borderline constitutional fascism constitutional fascism listen okay first off let's ignore the fact that not even the founder fathers who wrote the constitution wanted constitutional fascism again they're called amendments for a reason Stephen. uh but the thing is the same way putting democratic in front of something doesn't make it better. Putting constitutional in front of something doesn't make it better. Like constitutional fascism, constitutional communism, constitutional cheating at pawn. I don't know. No wiggle room with the Constitution. Intellectual diversity, constitutional conformity. That's the Electoral College. And that is Steven Crowder's latest failure at debunking Adam Ruins Everything. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I might do it again.
especially with this full CEO. It went on for like 14 minutes. That 